Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you a step-by-step, -step, fast and easy way to start your own online store. Now don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Amazon and eBay. I think they are amazing selling platforms. All you need to do is list your items on there and then they will do the marketing for you. But there are downsides as well. With Amazon and eBay, you have huge price competition, high fees, and you also have limited ability to do upsells and email marketing to your customers. Having your own store also means that you can sell items that are prohibited. For example, I have a friend that's doing over $50 million a year selling e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes are banned on Amazon. And there are other things that you can also do. In my next video, I'm actually gonna be showing you a sneaky trick for how you can drop ship items in your own store that you would not be able to do on Amazon or eBay. Depending on when you're watching this, the video may have already been released. If it's already been released, I'll include a link to it in the video description below. Now, I'm not gonna lie, creating your own store definitely has a learning curve, but it's well worth it for the huge profits that you can earn. To make it as easy for you as possible, I'm gonna tell you the step-by-step -step instructions that you need to create your own online store. And I think you're gonna be surprised at just how easy it is. Let me switch over to my computer and give you a sneak peek at the store that we are going to create. Hey guys, so I wanted to give you a quick overview of what we're gonna to create today. So this, this here is the store that I'm gonna take you through step by step. As you can see, we've got a custom logo, we've got a menu, we've got a cart, we've got a checkout, we've got an area where people can add their account or can create, a, create an account with our store. If we scroll down the page here, you can see we've got a uh, we've got a banner for our homepage. We've got some content on our homepage. We've got a list of the recent products that we added to our store. And I'll show you what the different product listings look like for the different items that we've added. So if we click on this one here, you can see that we've got a... Uh, big feature image we've got a gallery of images and if you select an image you can get it you can it pops up and you can take a look at a bigger version of the image so it looks really professional this gallery we close that we've got a title you can see I've set this item to be on sale and I'll show you exactly how I've done that I've added in a bunch of content for this it's actually been um, optimized for search engines but nevertheless I've added in a bunch of content for it here I've done something I show you how to do that and how to edit it and something I've added that's really cool is that you can come here and you can select a variation of this cut this mug so you can select to buy it in black red green or yellow so if we select black so we'll pretend that we're a customer and we're coming to order this we just click add to cart and then you can see we can just click view cart here and I'm going to show you how easy it is for your customer to check out. So once they come here, they can they can add other items to their cart, but let's say they just want this, they can come and click proceed to check out. And then as you'll be able to see, all we've got to do here is create an account with us so that we can keep their contact details and remarket to them later again. And then they can, once they've done that, they can proceed to PayPal. And when they proceed to PayPal, they'll be able to pay with their credit cards, whether or not they have a, uh, whether or not the customer has a PayPal account, they can use PayPal to pay with their credit card regardless. And the great thing about PayPal is that you get paid immediately, which makes this a really great option if you want to drop ship items. So that is the sneak peek at the store that we are going to be building. Let's get started on the four step process to building your own online store. Step one is registering your hosting and your domain name. Step two is installing WordPress. Step three is installing our e-commerce theme. And step four is customizing our own store. So we're gonna be doing things like adding a logo, adding products and adding a homepage. And if any of this sounds scary, don't worry because it isn't. In fact, if you want, you can even follow along with the video and build your store while I'm building mine. So let's get started on step one, which is registering our hosting and our domain name. For those of you that don't know, a domain is a unique URL address to your website. It's very similar to an offline address. Offline, you may have an office located at 167 Jacksons Road. If someone goes to 167 Jacksons Road, they would find your office. Your domain is your business's online address, and it is how people find your business's website on the internet. For example, google.com is Google's domain name. If you were to type in google.com into your browser's address bar, you would land on Google's website. 
And for those of you that don't know, web hosting is a service that lets you store your website's files online. Think of web hosting as the same as renting out an empty office. You need an empty office to store your furniture, but the office comes unfurnished. Well, to build your own online store, you're going to need to upload and store some files online. You are going to need to upload your images and your product data and things like that. Luckily, most of what you need to do has already been done for you, and the rest of the stuff can be set up with a few clicks. I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do this and exactly what you need to upload. Now, to get both our domain and our web hosting, we're going to be using one of my favorite services online, which is called iPage. I really like iPage because they are really simple and easy to use, and importantly, they are very competitively priced. You can get your own domain and web hosting for just $1.99 a month. I'm going to switch back to my computer now and show you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your domain and web hosting with iPage. So I'm here at iPage. Now, iPage is the web hosting that I use and I personally recommend because it's really cheap to get started and they also include a free domain registration, which makes it super simple and easy for people that have never opened an online website before, especially an online store before. Now, you can get your own iPage hosting in the video description below. I want to note that that is an affiliate link, but I'm only recommending it because of the fact that I personally use iPage and I love it. So let's get started. You click sign up now. And it's just going to load up. I'm going to be apologizing in advance for my internet connection. My internet connection is quite slow today. So what you want to do is you want to come up here and register a new domain. Now, you may or may not, like if you've already got a domain, you can use your own one. But for this example, I'm going to be creating a new one. I'm going to be creating broodtreats.com. Chic availability because I'm going to make a e-commerce store designed around coffee items. And it's just searching for the domain now. It'll probably be a whole lot faster for you guys. It's only the slow because of my internet connection. My internet connection is quite weak. Here you go. Perfect. So it's got our domain name, which is exactly what we want. Now what you need to do is you want to fill in this contact information. This contact information is quite private, so I'm going to be pausing the video while I fill it out. You can also come down here and for payment, you can select to pay with your credit card or with PayPal. I'm personally going to be paying with my credit card, but you could also, but you could pick PayPal. So I'm just going to pause the video and fill this information in now. Okay, so I'm back here and I've filled in my data. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that they're going to have this total of $103.60. That's because they've included a bunch of options that you don't need. The first option they've included here, this thing here to back up your site daily. Well, you can back up your site if you like, and I've got other services to do that for me. I would definitely untick this, and that's going to drop the price down a lot. The other thing they do is have this thing here. You definitely don't need this. You can untick this as well. And then if you come here, you'll see that they've got domain privacy set up. Now, I personally really like domain privacy. I usually include it, but it's entirely up to you. And if you're looking to cut costs, just untick the box. Next thing they do here, well, the final thing that they do that's a little bit sneaky is they include two years in your hosting plan. If you're just starting out and you want to just try this, then I'd recommend that you switch this to be one year. And then if we come down, you'll see that your total is now $23.88. That's a huge saving. So come and click check out. And now it's just going to register my account for me. Perfect. This page here is entirely optional. You don't need to fill it out at all. Just click no thanks. And then just come to the next page. Cool. And we're here now. On this page, they're trying to upsell you some more. It's one of the things that you get. Like, If you're going to be getting really cheap web hosting, like I'm showing you how to get, they're going to try to upsell you on all sorts of things that you don't need. Just skip on by, skip on by, and click no thanks. We don't want this. We just want our $23.88 web hosting and our domain name. And once you've done all that, you're finished. Congratulations. You now have your hosting and your domain name and it's just setting it up now. Now it's time for us just to log in to our account.
and we just need to create our account here. You are going to need to set a password to get into your hosting account. I would recommend that you make this very strong. I have an app called LastPass which does that for me. So make sure that you have a strong and potentially write down somewhere. You're going to have to create a security question and then give a security answer. Make sure that it's legitimate because of the fact that if you ever have problems getting into your account, it's going to be very important that you can answer your security question. And you can enter in your referral information. You can say that you came here from Wholesale Ted, that's absolutely fine, but you definitely don't have to. And then you're just going to have to click that you agreed to the terms of service because this information is obviously uh, very private. I'm going to pause this video and once I've finished it, I'm going to click save and continue and show you what it's like on the next page. And that's it. Once you set up a password, you are done. Make sure that you write that password down somewhere so that you've got it safe. Now, we're going to need to be in this control panel for step two, so just stay in it. Just one thing to keep in note is that if you come to the the email account that you set up your iPage hosting with, they're going to have given you a really important email over here. This email is going to contain your admin uh, username to be able to log in to your web hosting account. So keep that in mind that your admin username has been sent to and this has been included in this email and the password that you set up earlier is going to be the password that you use to also log in to your control panel. Move on to step two, installing WordPress. For those of you that don't know, WordPress is a powerful but easy to use website creation tool. And best of all, it is absolutely free. When WordPress was first created, it was set up to create blogs, but it has now expanded and you can use it to create lots of different types of websites, such as e-commerce stores. With iPage, it is super easy to install WordPress on your new web hosting and domain. Let me switch back to my computer and show you exactly how to do this. So I've switched back to my computer. I'm going to show you how to install WordPress on your new hosting and your new site. So you want to come here to website and then you want to click WordPress. And we'll just open up WordPress now. Sorry if my internet's a bit slow. Cool. Now down here they're going to say, hey, we'll do it for you and we'll charge you a bunch for it. But you really, really don't need them to do that at all. You can do it for absolutely free. So just click, if you come here and you click install. And it's just loading it now. First thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to select the domain that you would like to install it on. Now, you've probably only got one domain in your account if you've been following these instructions. So do that there. Now, over here, you want to leave this blank. As you can see, it's it says directory, but I haven't actually typed anything in here. You want to leave this entirely blank. So then you go check domain name, and it's just going to make sure that there's no WordPress already installed on it. And it's going to come out that there is not because this is a fresh domain name. All right, so it says that there are some files that need to be overwritten. They're just files that iPage has already installed on it for to it's, it's filler pages. Yes, you want to proceed. Click continue. All right, now we just need to fill out these. From here, you just need to click, I have read the terms and conditions. You don't need to see the advanced options. And then click install now. And... WordPress is now going to be installed from you for you automatically, which is awesome. And you can see at the top here, the bar is moving, which is letting us know that WordPress is currently being installed. And they're going to try to sell you a bunch of themes. We do not need these themes because we are going to be using a free theme that I'm going to show you exactly how to get. And our installation is almost done. Almost, almost, almost done. Perfect. Perfect. Now you can test if your install was successful by just opening a new tab and then typing in your domain name. So we are rudetreats.com. And this nice little page here is going to be showing up, telling us that our installation of WordPress was successful. All that's left is for us to come in and log in. So click admin login, and it's going to take you to your admin login screen. 
So now you're going to need your username and your password. Luckily, this is really easy to get. If you come over to the email that you signed up with, with your um, domain name and hosting, you're going to be sent the login details. So I'm just going to pause this video and grab my password. And as you can see, my username is going to be my email address. Perfect. So I have my WordPress password. The way that I got it was here I clicked on view password and then it took me to this page here. And then what I had to do was come and click on this button here and it showed me my login credentials. So that's how you get your password. My password is confidential though, so I'm not going to show it on screen. So we come back here to our login. We will type in broodtreats at gmail.com. And then we will enter in the password that we got earlier and then we will log in and it's going to take me to my account screen which is where we need to be for step three perfect and here we are inside our dashboard all right, awesome. We have installed WordPress on our new web hosting and domain. That's gonna make creating our online store super easy. To turn our website into an online store, we're gonna be using what is called a plugin. A plugin is a piece of software that we can install on WordPress. Think of a plugin like an upgrade. We're gonna be upgrading WordPress to give it new features. And these new features are gonna make it really easy for us to create our new online store. And just like WordPress, it is absolutely free to get this plugin and it's also super easy to install. This plugin is called WooCommerce. Let me switch back to my computer, show you how to get it, and also show you how to install it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come and install a plugin. So we're gonna come here and click Add New. Right, so what you want to do is you want to search for the WooCommerce plugin. So come here to search plugins and type in WooCommerce and then click go. Perfect. So what we want to do is you want to come to this one here. Now this one here is free. So click install now. Perfect, so it is successfully installed. What we want to do is you want to click Activate Plugin. And now WooCommerce is set up. Now here you could be going through and setting up the different settings, but I'm going to show you how to do that later. So for now, click Not Right Now. And now we're back at the dashboard. Now we want to come and find our theme for WooCommerce. This theme is going to make our website look really cool. See, I'll show you what our current website looks right now. Looks like right now. Yep. So right now, our website does not look like a store at all. It looks like a blog. So we want to find what's called a theme, which will make our website look really nice. Now I've got a free theme that I recommend, which is Misto. I'm not sure if I pronounced it right, but that's how I've always called it. Misto. It is absolutely free. To download it for free, just come down the page here and click Add to Cart. Now, I know Add to Cart indicates that it's going to cost you money, but I promise you this is not going to cost you a single thing. As you can see, the total is zero dollars. All you want to do is come and click Check Out Now. Cool. So, you now need to log in. We need to log in to either your WooThemes account or you need to create one. And creating an account is really easy. I'll show you how to do it. So you just come in here and fill in your first name, your last name, um, your email address. You have to talk about like um, how you're going to use the products, your country, your address, your town, city, your country, and your zip code. And then I would recommend that you untick this box so that you don't get sent emails from them. And then you'll have an account. Now, I am going to... Um, pause this video and fill out this information because of the fact that it's quite private but I'll show you what it's like on the other side. 
Okay, so I've filled out my information. Um, one thing I should also note is that you need to include an account name and account password. I forgot to mention that before. So once you've filled out the information, just come and click purchase. And there we go. Once you have filled out your account and you've clicked purchase, you'll come here. On this screen here, we are able to download Mistil for free. So come and click download. And as you can see here, it is downloading to my computer right now. And just load and load and loading. Done. So now that I've got Mist all downloaded, I now want to install it on my website. So come back to your dashboard. Now what you want to do is you want to come to Appearance and you want to click Themes. On this page here, you want to come and you want to click Upload because we're going to upload Mistil to our website. Now come down here and click choose file. Now you're going to need to find where you installed Mistil, or sorry, where you downloaded Mistil to your computer. So I found it and I'm going to click it and then I'm going to click open. And then I'm going to click install now. And down below here you can see that it is currently uploading. Excellent, it has now successfully installed the theme. Now we need to just click activate. Perfect, now Mistil has been activated and installed on Brood Treats. We can now move on to the next step. So now we're on to step four, customizing our store. I'm gonna teach you how to add and customize the following. One, your store options, such as your shipping, your payment gateway, and your currency. Two, I'm gonna teach you how to add the products that you're going to sell. Three, I'm gonna teach you how to add a custom homepage. Four, I'm gonna teach you how to add a custom logo. And five, I'm gonna teach you how to add a custom menu. So let's switch back to my computer and I'll show you how exactly to do all of this. All right, so now it's time to set up the important settings on our store. So just come here and click run the setup wizard. And let's click, let's go. On this page here, they're just telling you that you're gonna need some essential pages. Obviously for your store to work, you're gonna to need to have a shop page, you're gonna to need to have a cart, you're gonna to need to have a checkout, you're gonna to have to have a My Create. So these are gonna be automatically created for you by WooCommerce. But don't worry because you can always edit these yourself in the pages and you can control which pages are shown in your dashboard. So we're just going to come and we're going to click continue to go on to the next step. So now we need to set up our currency and things like that. So select where your store is going to be based. I'm going to be basing mine out of Auckland, New Zealand. Even though I'm going to be aiming my products worldwide, you now need to select the currency for your store. Even though I'm going to be having my store technically based in New Zealand, because I'm based in New Zealand, I'm going to be working with US dollars because of the fact that I'm going to be aiming my store mostly at people in the United States thanks to drop shipping. But it's entirely up to you. So click continue. Here you can set up your taxes. Now I'm based in New Zealand and I'm going to be selling mostly to people outside of New Zealand. So I will not have any sales tax obligations in that, in that way. So I am going to um, not select this. And this one here, will you be shipping products? I am personally not going to be shipping the physical goods to my customers because I'm going to be drop shipping. So I'm going to keep this unticked. But again, it would be entirely up to you. And then you click continue. And here you select how you're going to be accepting your payments. Now, as you can see, you can accept payments with PayPal. And this is what I would recommend because it allows you to get your money very, very fast, basically instantly. So what you would need to do is you would need to enter your PayPal address into this box here. You can also select to accept offline payments. So you could offer check to accept payment through check or through cash on delivery or through bank transfer. For most of you guys out there, I would probably recommend that you only select PayPal unless perhaps maybe if you've got say an eBay store where you are just re you got an eBay store and you're relisting the same items that you're selling on there on your own uh, website and if you normally accept cash on delivery or bank transfers with that then you could accept that here now I'm going to enter my PayPal address into this but because it's quite sensitive information I'm going to be pausing this video and then once I'm done I'm going to be clicking continue and then I will show you what it's like on the other side
All right, guys, I filled in my PayPal information, I click continue, and this is the page that you get sent to after that. Now what we want to do is we want to click return to WordPress dashboard because we're going to go ahead and move on to the next thing. Now that we've set up our store settings, it is time to add the products. This is probably the most time consuming part of starting your own online store, but it's well worth it and I encourage you to stick with it. I'm going to switch back to my computer and show you the step by step instructions on how you can add products to your new online store. Awesome, so now it's time to add products. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to create categories for our products. So come over here to products and click categories. Adding a category is really easy. Come here to name and type in the name of your category. So I'm going to be selling coffee cups, so I'm going to put in coffee cups. Now you need to add what's called a slug. Um, I recommend making this the exact same as the name. So mine is going to be coffee. Oh, sorry. In lowercase, coffee cups. And then you just come here and click add new product category. And if we come up here, we can see that we have added a new product category. So I'm going to go ahead and add in another one. I'm going to be selling coffee tampers. So I'm going to type in coffee tampers and then come here to slug. And in lowercase, I'm going to be writing coffee tampers again. And then I'm going to come down here and click add new product category. And here we go. We can see that we have successfully added the next category. So now that we've added our product categories, we need to set up what our shipping options are going to be for our products. So come here to WooCommerce and click Settings. Here we want to now click on Shipping. Now here we can modify the different shipping options that we've got. I'm personally only going to be having free shipping available because of the fact that my dropshipper is going to have free shipping. But you can modify this based upon what your shipping requirements are going to be. So the way that I'm going to enable free shipping is I'm going to come here and I'm going to click enable shipping. I'm going to get rid of the shipping calculator because of the fact that it doesn't matter since it's going to be free anyway. The shipping destination, I'm going to have it set to default to shipping address. Now, down here, you can see that you can restrict the locations that you ship to. If we click on this button here, we can see the locations that we're going to sell to, um, because right now it's saying that it's restricting the locations to all the countries that we sell to, obviously, well, yeah, the, the shipping. So I've right now got it set that I'm selling to all countries but you can restrict the countries that you're shipping to. As you can see in my general options, I have my base location as New Zealand and I am selling to all countries. So right now WooCommerce is set up for me to ship to the entire world. But obviously if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to ship to say only within the United States, you could set that. So right now you need to go through and manually select which of the different shipping options you're going to have. So you can select whether you're going to have flat rate shipping, free shipping, international flat rate, local delivery, local pickup. See if we go to flat rate shipping, you'll see that it is not enabled by default. You would have to select this to enable it and then you'd have to fill out all of the details for it. But again, I'm only going to be offering free shipping, so I'm just going to come over here. So I'm going to come here and click on Enable Free Shipping. In my method title, you can change what it's going to look like to the user. I'm just going to call it Free Shipping. Uh, method Availability, you can select which countries it's going to be available to. So uh, right now it's set up to all allowed countries, and for me, all, around, all allowed countries is worldwide. But I could set it up for specific countries. Now you can set it up so that there is a special requirement for free shipping. You can require it that they need a, a valid coupon, minimum order, but I'm going to have it set up so that everyone gets free shipping no matter what, no matter what they order. And then I'm just going to come and select save changes. Perfect, now I have free shipping enabled on my eStore. Now it's time to add the individual products. So we want to come over to this products tab and we want to click add product. So start out by putting in your product name. I'm going to be putting in the Whirlpool 
itself, stir mug, because that is the name of my item. The next thing that you want to do is you want to come to the product category and you want to select what the category is of the item you're selling. So I'm going to select coffee cups. Now we want to come down here and we want to enter in the product data. The first thing we want to do is we want to come and we want to click on this. Now we want to see it, what, so we want to add what type of product it is. So there's simple product, group product, affiliate product, or variable product. Most of you are going to be paying attention to simple product or variable product. Simple product is if you've got only one type of the item. Variable product is if you've got, say, something that has multiple color options or multiple sizes. This coffee cup has four different colors. So I'm going to click variable product. Next thing you want to do is you want to enter in your SKU if you have one. If you're just starting out, you probably don't have one, but because this is just an example store and this isn't an actual item I sell, I don't have an SKU. So I'm going to come and click on inventory. On the inventory screen, you can select to manage stock. This is important if you've only got, say, five items in stock. You will definitely want to en enable the stock management. So you just click on that here. Then you would add in the stock quantity. You could select to allow back orders. I would suggest that you don't add back orders unless you're experienced at doing this. You can also select it so that people can only purchase items individually. I am going to be drop shipping. And so I don't have stock, so I'm going to deselect this, and then I'm going to click on shipping. Here, if you have an item that has a shipping option, like flat rate or something like that there, and the price of it is determined by the weight and the size of the item, this is where you'd fill out that information. Now, I've offered free shipping for all of my products because my dropshipper has free shipping, so I'm going to ignore this, but you could enter that. If we come here, we can check out what linked products is. This here is actually a really great option once you've got lots of products added into the system. Upsells are products that get recommended to your customer when they're at a when they're looking at other products. So if someone is looking here at my Whirlpool self stir cup, I could have other products listed below it saying you might like this, very similar to what Amazon do. And then cross sales are products that appear to the user when they're at the cart and say, hey, I see you're buying this, would you like this item here? This can be a great way to earn extra money. I don't have other items currently added to my store, so I can't select any upsells or cross sales, but I would suggest that you do that. Now this attributes tab is very important. This is how we're going to be setting up the different types of variable products that we've got. So come and click add. So to get started at adding a product attribute, come over here to name. So if you were selling different sizes of t-shirts, here you would put sizes. I'm selling different colors of mugs, so I'm going to type in color. Now you want to enter in the different types of sizes or colors that you have. So for me, I am selling black, a black mug. Now you do a space and you do what's called a pipeline, which is this symbol. And then I'll type my next one, which is red. And then I'm selling green. And then I'm selling yellow. Now you want it to be have it select to be visible on the product page. And you also want to click use for variations. And then you want to click save attributes. Now we want to come and we want to click on variations. And then we want to come up here to add variation. And then we want to put select create variations from all attributes and click go. Yes, I do want to do that. Click OK on that on that there. And it says that four variations have been added. Now, you can also add in different variations as well. You don't just have to have a single one, but because I've only got my mugs, uh, my mug variations based upon color, I've selected these. Now we want to come in and we want to modify the price for each one. So what you want to do is you want to come and click on this here. What it's going to do is it's going to toggle the different individual options available for each variation. You might have noticed before, might have noticed before that the general tab previously had the price for the item available on it. Then when I selected variable product, the price option disappeared. That's because we need to set the individual price for each variation. So you want to come and you want to set your regular price. So for me, I'm going to have my item on sale and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to come and select my regular price is... $24.99. Then I'm going to come and select the sale price. 
this is the price that it'll be available for for anyone if they want to purchase it and it's going to have a nice big sale on it so i'm going to put $19.99 it's in stock status is well stock status is in stock which is perfect i'm not going to bother setting any weight or dimensions for mine and then that's all good i'm going to click save changes now I just need to go through and do it for each individual one. So it will come here for red and we'll fill that in as well. It's in stock, yes. And its regular price is $2499 and then $19.99. Then I'll come and click save changes. Do the next one. All good. $24.99. Save changes. Oops, sorry. Now we've got one final one to do. Yellow. This one is $24.99. And its sale price is going to be $19.99. Save changes. There we go. We've gone ahead and we've added the prices to for all our different variations. Uh, yes. Mm. And we just want to finish off by coming to the advanced tab. Now on the advanced tab, you can set, you can set a purchase note, um, menu order. One thing I would suggest that you do is you untick enable reviews. I personally don't like to have reviews on my website like that, so I'm going to untick them. Again, it, it well not again, but it is entirely up to you whether you have reviews. But I'm going to deselect them. Now we want to come and we want to figure out what the layout is going to be. I would suggest that you click this one here, which is going to enable a full page with layout. Then we come to the product description. I've already got a product description saved to my clipboard, so I'm just going to paste that in right now. As you can see, it's quite big. Now you've got lots of options when you are uh, sorry, modifying your description. You've got lots of different things here to make it really easy for you. So I'm going to be doing bullet points and I'll show you my bullet points. Now I have organized my description so that it reads very similarly to what Amazon do. So it starts out with a little mini, well they don't actually have that, but my one's going to start out with a little mini blurb to get people interested. It's going to be followed up by some bullet points like this which and then it's going to come down here where I'm going to have titles like this here you don't make this bold because it's a title this one here is a title so if you come here and you make it bold yeah express yourself with our different colors oops sorry it comes in four colors red black yellow and green they are all and then we've got free worldwide shipping which I've notified which I've noted here so this here and here we go I have my product description set up the next thing that we want to do is you want to come up here and we want to add products to our, we want to add product images to our product gallery. So come and select this and click add product gallery images and then select files. Now I'm going to come to my folder here. I've got my things saved and I'm come to my self stir mug and I'm going to select all of my pictures and then click open. Now it's just loading them up into my product gallery and this one here is an image I've already uploaded but it's not selected so it's not going to be added to my product gallery. The ones here that are ticked are going to be and then click add to gallery and then as you can see I've now got images set up for my product gallery. Now we want to select an image that's going to be our featured image. So come and click set product image and then I've got my one I've already wanted uploaded but we're just you could come here and click upload files and select the image you want. I want this to be my main one 
and then we will set product image. Excellent. Now we have our image set up. Now we have successfully created our first product. All we need to do is click publish. I'm going to show you a preview of what our uh, product is going to look like here, the product page that we have created. So if we take a look, see, we've got our title here. We've got this big sale thing here with the sale pro with the sale price and the regular price crossed out. We've got our image that we selected to be our main image here. And we've got our different gallery with our different images. And if you click on the image, it pops up here and it's nice and big. You can see that we've got the description that we added. And I added in bullet points and the bullet points are here. And if we come down, you'll be able to see that we have our color options and a user can just come in or a customer can come in and select an option so they can select red and then they could just click add to cart. So we have successfully set up our first product. We now just need to go and click publish. Then we'll have our first new product on our store. Perfect, so now we have a new product. I'm now going to teach you how to add a simple product, so a product that doesn't have a variation. So come and click Add Product up here, like I just did. So I'm going to start out by clicking, by typing in my product name, sorry. My product name is Travel uh, Camera Lens Mug. Then I'm going to come down here and click Coffee Cups as my product category. Then I'm going to come to my product data. Now I've got a simple product and it's not virtual and it's not downloadable. I don't have an SKU for mine. My regular price for this is $24.99 yeah, $24 and then my sale price for this will be $19.99. So if we come and we click on the inventory tab, I don't need to enable stock management. It is sold. It is in stock, sorry, and I am not they don't require them to be sold individually. I'm going to ignore the shipping because of the fact that I've got free shipping. For linked products, I might as well set up an upsell for the one that I've got already. So uh, my last one, my coffee. Oh, sorry, what's it? Yeah, it's called my, my mug. There, will, will, there we go. It doesn't have the word coffee in it. And mug. Click that there. So now the... Use. Now the customer will see my Whirlpool self stir mug as an upsell and as a cross sell. Now, if we come here to uh, attributes, I don't need to set up a custom product attribute because of the fact that I am not selling variable products. You can optionally if you so want. And then come here to advanced. I am going to disallow reviews by clicking on that. Then I'm going to come down here to the layout. And I'm going to select this one again to have full um, a full wood page layout. Now we come to the product description. Again, I've got a product description for this uh, product saved to my clipboard. So I'm going to paste that in. Now I'm going to go through and edit it once again. So just like before, I have a... Um, I have a little blurb to start with, and then I have bullet points, and then I have uh, more information down here. So I'm going to do all this. One of the really nice things about doing it in a similar way to what Amazon do by having bullet points and a separate product description is that it allows you to uh, get, get further mileage out of the different... Um, out of all the different things you say. So at the start, you can say, you know, oh, this product, it's safe and it's got these features that make it really safe to use. And then later on, you can then once again say, oh, this product's safe. It's great to use in the description. By having bullet points with the different things, you can, like, you know, I can say big capacity here. And then later on, I can say in the description, I can be like, oh, it's got... This is the sizing, so I get extra mileage out of it. So we've got this here. I'm making that bold, and then I'm adding in some more bullet points here. And then this, this. If you want to know how long your description should be, I would recommend it be at least 400 words, just because that is something that uh, Google really like. 
they like to see that a, a page has at least 400 words on it. So if you want to get a Google search engine traffic, having your product description be at least 400 words is going to really help. Now add the feature image for the product. So I'm going to click set product image and come to upload files. Click select files and then I'll find my products. Um, this one here is going to be my feature image. So I'm going to upload that now. Now it's uploaded. I'll click set product image. Excellent. Now we'll come to add product gallery images and then we'll come and we'll select upload files. Click select files. Now, something I did accidentally earlier was I included the thumbnail image with my gallery images. You don't need to do this. Come and select the other images, the extra images. Click upload. Perfect, we've got them there. We'll click add to gallery. Now we've got our product image galleries. So let's check out the product that we just created. Oh, oh, I'm sorry guys, I just had a realization. Um, I'm going to come down here and go to linked products and I'm going to remove this as an upsell. Sorry, by clicking this button here. Because of the fact that I realized my product description is actually a little bit too big. So with that, it might kind of mess up the page design. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Anyway, come and click preview. And we'll preview our new thing. Here we go. So this is the product that we have created. We've got the title here. We've got the sale price. We've got the description that I created and we've got the product images. So this one here, you can click this one here and open it up in the gallery. We can flick through the different images in our gallery that we selected. And yes, and we can come down here and we can click add to cart. And we've got related products here even though we deselected over here um, to have the upsell. Uh, you don't need to worry about this. Basically, what happens is that if the description is longer than the images, then it kind of messes it up a little bit. So I'll show you what I mean. We'll select the Whirlpool Soft Stir Mug. And then we'll come and we'll click preview. And you'll see that the design gets a little bit messed up. See, it says you here. And then if we come down, you may also like. And then the product and the product is down there. So what I would suggest is that if your description is going to go longer than the image, that you come down and that you don't have an upsell. And even though you don't have an upsell, it's still going to show related products anyway, down here, but it's not going to mess up your design. So hopefully that's a nice little tip for you. All that's left for you now to do is to come and click publish. Once you click publish and it loads up, you're going to have uh, your new product added. So I've shown you how to add a product with a variation. I've added, showed you how to add a simple product. I'm now going to pause the video and I'm going to add in a bunch more products that I'm going to be utilizing throughout this tutorial. All right, as you can see, I have added in some extra test products for us to use for the rest of this tutorial. And right, we're now gonna move on to the next step. So now that we've added our products, it is time to customize our homepage. And doing this is really easy. We're gonna be creating a simple, clean homepage that looks professional. Let me switch back to my computer and show you how exactly to do this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to edit our homepage. Now what you want to do is you wanna come over to this here and click pages. Next you want to come up here and click add new. Come here to this and type in home page. Then once you've done that leave everything else blank. Um, actually we'll come here and we will click this button here sorry. Mm -hmm. So come here click that then come and click publish. Now we've created our home page. We now need to set this as our home page. To do that, come over here, come to settings and then click reading. 
Now you want to come to this and you want to select this button. You want to come to front page and you want to find home page. That is the page that we created earlier. Now come down and click save changes. Now you have selected your home page to be the main front page of the home page for your website. We just need to go in now and edit it. So let's come back to our home page. Come here and click pages. Come find your home page, which you can see has now been set to the front page and click edit. The first thing I'd recommend that you do is you get rid of this, get rid of home page because it looks really ugly when you take a look at the home page that you created if you have a title there. Now what you can do is you can come to this box and you can enter in whatever content that you're going to have for your home page. So I'm just going to copy and paste in some uh, content that I created in advance. One thing I'm going to show you is that how to use this editor here. So I want to turn this into a headline. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come and I'm going to click toolbar toggle. Then I'm going to come over to paragraph and I'm going to select headline or heading two. So select heading two. Now I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. We'll preview it for you. So let's preview changes. You will see what we've created so far. All right, so it's coming along nicely. We've got some content here and a headline. Let's add a banner to it up here, and let's also add here some related products so that when people come to the page, they can see some products, and that helps to make it look really professional. So let's come back and let's add a banner to it. So I'm going to click Enter to make a space. Then I'm going to click Add Media. Then I'm going to click Upload Files. And then I'm just going to select files. And I'm going to find a homepage banner that I've already created in advance. And I'm going to click Open. And now it's just uploading that banner for me. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to have the alignment set to left. And I'm going to have it set to be full size. This is what I would recommend for you. This is a good measurement if you want to create a banner that's similar to mine in size. So click insert into page. And now it has added a banner to our home page. So let's now add in some products to our home page to make it look really professional. To do this, we're going to use what's called a short code. If you don't know what a short code is, don't worry, you don't need to. You just need to copy what I do here. So come down, make a space, and then type this in. Recent products per underscore page equals, now I'm going to put eight products. I'm going to have eight products showing on my home page, but you could show less. You could show more. Columns equals four. I think four columns looks really professional. That is what I would recommend to you. Now let's come and let's preview our new changes. Go and select preview changes and we will come here and see how it's looking. Awesome. So now we have a, a nice banner here. If you come down, we've got our content and we've also got some products. We've got the most recent products that we've uploaded here. And so we've now got a professional looking homepage. It's time to update the logo. But before we update the logo, we need to just quickly make sure that we save our changes. So come back and click update. Now we have updated our new homepage. So now we're going to add a custom logo to the store. You may be wondering how you can get your own logo made for you. Well, I recommend that you use a website called Fiverr for this. Fiverr is a website where freelancers will sell their services for amazing prices. I use it all the time and I strongly recommend it to everyone. For just $5 plus a 50 cent transaction fee, you can get an amazing logo designed for your new online store. I've been using Fiverr for years. In fact, I've actually purchased logos on Fiverr for brands that are now six-figure brands. To check out Fiverr for yourself, simply click on the link in the video description below. But just a disclaimer, the logo that I'm using for this example is not one that I had made on Fiverr. I just created a quick logo myself for you as an example. 
I'm going to switch back to my computer and show you how easy it is to upload a custom logo. Now it's time to add a custom logo and it's really easy. The first thing you need to do is you need to come down here to settings and you need to click general. Now you need to come to the site title. You need to make sure that this box is empty. If there's anything in this box, delete it. You now need to come to the tagline. And if there's anything in this box, you should also delete it. And then you should come down here and you should, you should click save changes. The next thing that you wanna do is you wanna come and click Mistal. Now you wanna come here to the custom logo section. So I've already got a logo uploaded, but it's really easy to upload one. All you're gonna to need to do is come and click upload, then come to upload files and click, click select files. From here, you wanna find the logo that you've already created in advance. So here's my logo that I've already created in advance. Once it's uploaded, click use as custom logo, and then your logo will appear here. Next thing you want to do is make sure that this box is unchecked. If it's, if it's ticked like this, you should untick it. And then you should come to this one. If this box is ticked like this, you then want to untick it. You then want to come down and click Save Changes. Now that we've added a custom logo, let's check out what it looks like on our new website. Great, so now we have a logo up here at the top. And if we click through to one of the products that we created earlier, we'll be able to see that the logo appears at the top of the screen there. And it looks really nice and professional. All right, so we are almost done. We've updated the settings, we've added products, we've customized our homepage, and we've even added a custom logo. Now we just need to add a custom menu so that our website is easy to navigate. Let me switch back to my computer and show you how exactly to do this. Now it's time to set up a menu. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here to appearance and then click menus. Come over here to the text box and type in a menu name. We'll just put it as main menu because that's really simple. And then we will click create menu. Now we can choose to add product, well not products, we choose to add pages, sorry, to our menu. Now, if you come over here, you'll see that we've got a bunch of different pages that we can add. So we can just tick them. What we want to do is we want to include this one here. It says no title, this is our home page. So you wanna make sure you got that there. You wanna make sure the users can easily access their account. So tick that one. You want to make sure that users can easily access the checkout. You wanna make sure that users can easily access the cart. And you also wanna make sure that they can access the different products, which is what the shop page is. So go and click add to menu. We can now edit the names of these, which we want to do because we definitely don't want our homepage to be called this. So click this, and then instead of it being called that, call it home. And once you've done that, you've now got that. We want to then order these in a way that makes sense for the customer. So we'll move shop to the front, and we'll put checkout so I don't check out, um, we'll be able to put check out up here and we'll put cart up here as well. And we'll put my account there. One thing I might also change is shop because I think that shop is kind of an ugly term for it. So we'll click this and then we'll type in products. Now there's no save button. You may have noticed to save these, just click this. Once you've, once you've updated your menu and you've created as you want it to be, come here and click Save Menu. We now need to set this to be our primary menu. So come down here and click Primary Menu and click Top Menu and then click Save Menu. Now let's preview what it looks like on the main site. And now you can see we have replaced the menu with our new one.
Now there is one last thing that I want to talk to you about that I almost forgot to talk to you about and it is a necessary thing that you need to ensure. So come over here to pages and click that. What you now need to do is you need to go through and make sure that all of the pages that you've created have a full width. They are set to be full width. So come click edit on your home page. Now this should already be set there, but make sure it's set anyway. Click on that and then click update. All right, now come back to all pages. The pages that you need to make sure have full width are, the th are your home page, your cart, your checkout, my account, and shop. So we're going to come to cart now, and we're going to click edit, and we're going to make sure that it is set to full width. Go, click on it, make sure it's set to full width, click update. It was already set to full width, luckily, but we're going to make sure that it is. Now come back here to all pages. Come to checkout. We need to make sure that our page for the checkout is set to full width as well. So come down here and select this again and then click update. Again, mine was already selected, but you need to make sure that your checkout is selected because if you don't, when it's not set to full width, it looks really strange and odd. So you want to make sure that it's looking good. Then you want to come to my account and click edit again. You want to come back here and down here. And make sure that this is set. For me it's already set but you need to make sure that your one is also set for my account. Alright, got one more. Come back and click all pages. Now scroll down here and you'll see shop. Now we're going to click edit. In addition to editing uh, the fact, making sure that this is set to full width down here, what I would suggest that you do is you come up here and you change shop to say products because we've changed it already in the menu to say products, so you might as well make sure that the page also says products. So then click update. And we'll do one other thing while we're here. Come back here to all pages. Scroll down. Now you see these sample pages here? These sample pages you don't need. So come and in fact you don't actually want them, they are bad. So click trash. Scroll down, there's another sample page. Click trash. Excellent. One thing you might also notice is that I have an about us page here that I haven't talked about already. Later on in the video, I'm going to talk about how you can add extra pages like this as an optional additional feature to your store. I recommend that you keep watching this video to make sure that you don't miss out on that. And that's it. You are done setting up your own online store. If you want to get started on step one, simply click on the link in the video description below to get your own hosting and domain name with iPage. But before I finish this video, I'm going to go over some optional additions that you can add to your store to make it look even more professional. I'm going to quickly teach you how to do two things. One, I'm going to teach you how to create an About Us page. You can then use this to create other pages yourself, like a privacy page. And two, I'm going to teach you how to remove Powered by WordPress in the footer. So let's get started. I'm going to switch back over to my computer and show you how to add an About Us page. Okay, let's add an About Us page. Come over here to Pages and click Add New. Now up here in the title, I would suggest that you have a title. The reason being is that while having a title looks really bad on the home page, it looks good on the other pages. So type in About Us. Now, you come down here just like before, and in this box here, you add in the different content that you want for your About Us page. Now, I've got some saved to my clipboard, so I'm just going to post it in and make it look nice. So, one thing that I want to do, let's make that look better, um, is... I want to add an image here to the left. I think adding an image here would be nice. So to do that, I'm going to come and I'm going to click Add Media. Now I'm going to click Upload Files and I'm going to select Files. And I'm going to look for the About Us picture that I want to include. So I've found it and I'm going to click Open. I'm going to let it load up now. Now what I want to do is I want to come here and I want to make sure that the alignment is set to left. This means it's going to indent the picture in my text to the left. 
I want to make sure that I've also set it to full size. Now I'm going to click insert into page. As you can see, the image is now indented to the left and the words are over there on the right. Now what I want to do is I want to come here and I want to select this to make sure that it is a full page width. And then I'm going to preview this, uh, this page that I've got. So I'm going to come here and click preview. See, looking really good. We've got about us here, the title, we've got our image here, and we've got our words. So let's go and come back here, and then we will click publish so that we can save our new page on our website. And we have successfully published the page to our site. Now let's add it to the menu. To do that, just come over here to appearance and click menus. So we want to come and we want to add image, add pages sorry, to our menu just like we did before. So come and tick about us and click add to menu. We've now added the about us page to our website. We can move it up or down the list as we see fit. Let's move it there so that we can access it. It, will, it's, it shows up right next to products. Once you've done that, just come and click save menu. Excellent. Now let's go and let's preview what it looks like on our site. So you can see we've added the About Us page to Brood Treats. If we click on this page, our new About Us page is going to load up. As you can see here, it has successfully loaded up and we've added an About Us page. And it's really nice adding pages like this here. The more pages you've got, the more content you've got like that. It creates a social proof for the buyer and it makes them more likely to purchase from you. I recommend adding in pages like this and say privacy uh, policy and a refund policy. Things like that are good. Excellent, you now know how to add pages and how to add them to your menu. Let's switch back to my computer now and I'll quickly show you how to update the text in your footer. We've got something else that we still need to do. We need to come down here and we want to change this. Right now it says powered by WordPress, designed by Woo Themes. It looks really ugly and unprofessional. We want to get rid of that. Getting rid of that is made really easily thanks to Mistel. So come up here to your dashboard and then come and select Mistel. Next, you want to come and click on Footer Customization. Now you want to come down and you want to select this here. Now, you can replace that text here. You can replace the Powered by WordPress, if you like, with your own text. Or alternatively, you can leave it blank. I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Then click Save Changes. Now let's preview what, well not preview, let's see what our new site looks like because those changes went live. All right, we scroll down. You'll see that the Power by WordPress is no longer there. We have successfully updated our footer to look more professional. So those are some extra tips to make your store more professional. Setting up your own online store will definitely take some time. As you can see, this video was quite long, but it's well worth it. It's so cheap. With iPage, you can get set up and running for a whole year for under $25. And plus, if you follow these step-by-step -step instructions in the video, it's super easy to set up your own store. To get started now, simply click on the link in the video description below to start building your website with iPage. Again, I strongly recommend iPage because it's really cheap, competitively priced, and really easy to use. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe to Wholesale Ted for more videos like this. And remember that in my next video I'm going to be releasing, I'm going to be showing you a sneaky method to find low cost but high profit dropshippers for your new online store. And you're going to be shocked at just how easy it is to do. And I'll be releasing that video in about a week. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, again, I might have already uploaded the video. And if I have, I'll include a link to it in the video description below. And if you would like to start your own online business, then be sure to download our free ebook, How to Make $10,000 a Month Online with Dropshipping. You'll find a link to how to download this incredible life-changing ebook in the video description below. Hi there, and thanks for watching this video created by us here at Wholesale Ted. It is our mission to help everyone start and grow their own online business. That is why we've created a simple ebook which shows how anyone, yes, even you, can make $10,000 each and every month with dropshipping, even if you don't have.
have startup money. And best of all, we're giving away this ebook for free. And yes, we really mean it. Absolutely free. So if you'd like to get this potentially life-changing ebook, simply click on the link in this video description and get it now.